Welcome to Mark D. Maker. My name is Mark Taylor. Welcome to my new set. Just recently remodeled, put in some new lights, moved things around a little bit. Feels much more comfortable. Today we're going to be talking about patterns. Three-dimensional wood carving patterns. Stick around, I'll show you. All right, let me bring you over to the workbench here. And so we're going to talk about three-dimensional wood carving patterns. Now, a, a two-dimensional pattern would be, you know, you could just take a, a one-by board and, and cut it out on a scroll saw or bandsaw and round the edges, and, and you can get a nice little carving, but it's, it's only uh, two-dimensional, not three-dimensional. Three-dimensional would be something more like this guy where you know it's carved in the round all the way around so we're going to be talking about those patterns <clears throat> three-dimensional patterns here's a here's another three-dimensional pattern this is a black cap chickadee I carved this for a competition in Ocean City Maryland the world championship now <clears throat> When you're carving three-dimensional uh, wood carvings and you're looking at patterns to pick to do so, having these reference lines come across, this is on a grid. See the grid that it's on? <clears throat> this, is, this is from this book right here. <clears throat> having this grid will help you line up the pattern Matter of fact, if you size this right on your copier, you could just wrap it right around your block of wood. You will want it thick enough in both dimensions, and this would literally go on the front and this on the side, or vice versa, and, and wrap around both sides. So you want both sides you want to kind of get that fuzz off. You can just lightly sand it um, because you're going to want to put adhesive on your pattern and and place it in line so all these elements all line up front and side. <clears throat> now if you get a pattern like this, and this is a pretty good pattern, but you notice that it doesn't have those reference lines on it. So what you would do is you'd have to use a marker or an indicator like the tip of the beak and the back of the tail for both the top and side view to line those up and, and literally draw, draw lines so it'll indicate you know so if you get it just a little off uh, it'll look odd. It won't look right. <clears throat> now, um, of course, there's there's tons of books out there that you can get that have patterns. This is one with miniatures, and uh, that not only is there color pictures to help you in your painting, but uh, uh, there's patterns. Let's see if I can flip to a pattern here. There's also, in, in this particular book, here's a pattern you can see. And this shows the head turned sideways. So your, your center line here is very critical. And then you're, you'll have to line up. So you'll need a uh, a either a square or a, a right angle uh, marking tool or gauge to line up when you cut out the wood when using these patterns. And you would use a bandsaw. If it's small, uh, you could use even a scroll saw. That cardinal pattern is this guy. So if your subject is small enough 
to use a scroll saw. You could use a scroll saw to cut out this hummingbird. So you would put the side image here, the top image on top, and you would cut out one profile. You would tape, you, you save all your pieces, tape them back together, you would flip it like this and then cut out your top profile. And then what would come out of that is a very square looking hummingbird. Center lines, always critical when you're carving because you're going to carve in the round. So you're going to round to the center line, to the center line. You want to put a center line down the bottom and you just round to the center lines and you'll, you'll end up with something like this. Starting to look a little bit like a hummingbird. And you continue until you get something like this. Now I left the, I always leave the beak really long for painting. And that's the last thing I do is I'll trim that to size. Once you get a, a feel for three-dimensional patterns and, and how to do them, uh, you'll really start to get a feel for them and be able to make your own. This is, this is clay. This is, let's see, that's super sculpty. Um, and this was a study that I did to see if I wanted to carve it or not. But you can, you can see that um, you can pick up on three-dimensional form uh, and you can benefit from looking at wood carving patterns, even if you're not a wood carver, if you're a sculptor or, or uh, just doing general uh, clay work, you, you can benefit from it. Now, if you're just starting and don't have a bandsaw, you can get blocks like this. This is basswood, one inch by one inch. It's actually a pin blank made out of basswood. Or you can buy little chunks. This is, uh, I believe it's a two by two, uh, and I and I carve uh, little Santas out of that, and, and all kinds of little people and stuff out of these. So you don't need a bandsaw to get started carving, but for the more complex three-dimensional carvings, like this guy, you'll you'll probably want to get a, a bandsaw to get started because you'll be needing to cut out your basswood patterns to get to achieve this. So to achieve that guy, the pattern looks like this. You have your front facing pattern and your side pattern. Now I usually use Super 77 spray. So I would flip these over Give them a, a light coat of spray, let them dry for a moment, and then you'll tap it. It sticks to your finger. You'll know it's ready to go onto the wood. You just press it on the wood and you're ready to, to go. You're ready to start sawing. <clears throat> but, critical, you need to line up these elements to make sure that these elements are all lining up properly. Otherwise, uh, you'll be disappointed. So here we have the pattern on a piece of basswood. It's not glued down or anything like that, but it's on there and, and just so you can get an understanding, you can see how there's a little bit of wood on either the front or back of the pattern here. And you, you'll want that. You'll want to leave some meat of the wood in front and in back of the pattern. So you want a piece of wood that's big enough. You'll, you'll cut out this piece, tape it together on either end. Some people use blue painter's tape. I know some people that use super glue, um, hot glue, uh, just need some way to hold it together. And, uh, and then you cut out the other profile.
All right, here's another uh, book. This this little book uh, is carving a red tail hawk with Floyd Schultz. Floyd Schultz has won numerous uh, world championships in Ocean City, Maryland. That's where they hold the world championship at. Excellent little book, and it's got a pattern in it. <clears throat> if you take one of his classes, you would be cutting out this pattern if you were taking one specifically on the red tail hawk. And you can see the reference line there. Um, but there are other places other than just books. Now the advantage to a book is, you know, it, it'll get into uh, texturing and carving, setting the eyes, painting, and, and all that. And so this is great for starting and getting into the art of doing three-dimensional carving. And once you're on the way, you can buy patterns like this. Um, here's the artist here that, that drew the pattern. And I actually used this pattern on a full-size red tail hawk I have behind me. <clears throat> And it's a, it's a really good pattern. Usually it'll, it'll have uh, the artist's name, what it is, what the gender of the bird is. Here's a, uh, one of a ruddy duck that I did. So you see it it comes with some helpful hints but it doesn't come with step by step instructions on texturing and painting and and doing the details of course this when I bought it at the time was only four dollars and 25 cents <throat> you'll pay more for the books especially for somebody that's a uh, uh, like a world champion they're sharing their knowledge and, uh, and they deserve <laughs> to get paid what they get paid for, for those books. This one, this is a robin, and this comes with spread, spread wings. It's not unfolded all the way. This is a pretty big... Pretty big blueprint basically and it has all kinds of information on it from the feet, the beaks, the, the display of the tail feathers, the display of the wing fully opened <clears throat> and the pattern of it with its wings closed. Now I'm just going to shoot on through some of this and get to something other than a bird because there's people out there that like to carve things other than just birds. <clears throat> the run of a squirrel. <clears throat> now I just did similar two-dimensional of this squirrel but the information is here to be able to do the three-dimensional of the squirrel. Here's the top view and so you would you would do both sides of this. So your best bet is to make several copies and the right side is going to be the same as the left. So you want your top and your side, and you'll be good to go. Now there's plenty of carving magazines out there. This is, this is a, this pattern's probably from one of the carving magazines. And you see it doesn't have any reference lines, so you would want to put reference lines on this. And if you were gonna cut it out, it's literally gonna, wrap like that. If you left that paper attached, that makes for a pretty good reference to where you could be straight on the wood and uh, and keep everything lined up. <clears throat> I 
There's one of a, a fish. And with the fish, you would, you know, if you did not insert these fins and you carve this all out of one piece, you could reference, you know, the tip of the mouth here, the tip of the tail, the fins. Um, but this looks like it is in line here, so if that was wrapped like sprayed adhesive the whole thing and you wrapped it like so that looked like it might work <clears throat> now I carve a lot of birds I'm a bird watcher and a bird carver and so this is where I got started carving birds and there's competitions for people that carve just birds and some of these artists are just absolutely amazing. <clears throat> Here's one of a black cat chickadee. This is a really nice pattern. It gets into a lot of detail. So when you're buying patterns, especially as a beginner, um, you'll want as much information on it as possible. Uh, and you'll want these straight lines to help you line up on the wood when you're cutting out so you don't cut off the beak or cut off the tail in the process. This is a full-size red tail hawk that I carved. Using the blueprint pattern that I showed you earlier, the eyes are glass taxidermy eyes and they can also be purchased from wood carving supply stores. I will be getting into habitat stands and habitat for carvings, all different types of carvings in a future video. This is an owl, again from Floyd Schultz. You can tell I have my favorites. This is an Eastern screech owl. Look at those big eyes. So I almost forgot. All woodworking or wood carving supply catalogs have already cut out blanks. They're called blanks when they're already cut out. If you find a blank that you like, <clears throat> make sure it comes with some instructions. Uh, uh, lines where it shows where all the feathers go. Otherwise you'll be doing a lot of research to try to figure out where the feather lines go, where everything goes. Good patterns will come with feather lines, they'll show pictures of what the feet look like and even uh, possibly color reference. But a lot of that uh, is, is reference for you to go out and, and that's part of the fun, really, of it, is if you're going to carve something, do the research and find, find out the, the colors of things, the way things work. Maybe even do a little bit of research on uh, color and color theory is, is fascinating. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe. I'll see you next time.